<clears throat> Greetings and salutations, everybody. Uh, welcome back to, uh, you know, welcome to another uh, video as I go through this uh, 28 film set of Elvira's Movie Macabre from 2010. Uh, for this entry, she covers The Satanic Rites of Dracula from 1973. Um, now, this is one of the few in this set which I've actually seen before. Um, I actually did a review on this a little over a year ago, maybe about a year and a half ago. But before I go into more, here is a synopsis for this film. In 1974, Professor Lorimer Van Helsing investigates a satanic cult on behalf of Scotland Yard, only to discover a plot by Count Dracula to wipe out humanity with a bubonic plague. Like I said, I did a review of this one previously, um, when I went through about uh, 20 Hammer films in another set, and then decided to follow that up with going through all of the Hammer Dracula titles as well. So, um... I remember kind of liking it alright, you know, not thinking it was the best of it, but I even went ahead and kind of rechecked some of my own review because it had been so long since I'd seen it. Um, I haven't really been re-watching as many films over the past couple years. But um, I think I'd enjoyed it because um, I've been watching so many of those Hammer films kind of back to back every week. I was watching at least one or two of them that I was kind of in the right headspace, I guess, um, which made me kind of enjoy it initially. Now, I remembered some of it as I was watching it this time, but um, it really has some slow spots in it and takes, um, takes quite a while to get going. You know, to, to really get going in any way at all. There isn't even much Dracula in it overall. And um, I felt like it only really works right um, if you're kind of revisiting all of these films or checking out that entire franchise as a whole of all the Hammer Dracula films. It's a lesser entry in those cases, but it's still kind of fun. On its own, just viewed separately, not so much. It uh, was a bit boring during it. You know, a lot of it was boring. Um, which kind of echoes what uh, Elvira's sentiments were as well. But more on that in just a moment. Um... This film is still much better than the last one, the uh, I Eat Your Skin, which um, was really horrible. But, you know, so that's a good thing we have going forward in this set. Also, this edition on this Elvira set um, was much worse than my Blu-ray. And not just in the resolution, you know, but um, just in the mastering from the original print. It seems, you know, there was a lot more scratches and pops in the audio and everything. But also, real quick, this was Chris Frilly's last Dracula role for Hammer. I believe he did, like, a TV movie after this at some point that was horrible, which I haven't tracked it down. And everything I read about it basically said to skip it. But, um, so this was kind of interesting in that regard to see what his last uh, role as, um, as Dracula was. But, um... It was just okay, you know, not as bad as Elvira was kind of making it out to be, but um, if you're in the mood for some 70s horror along the lines of like the Hammer variety especially, um, it could definitely, you know, give a little bit of entertainment there. But for more detail, I'll simply link to my original review from about a year and a half ago. At the end of this video, it'll pop up on the screen if you want to hop by and check out that one. It's a similarly short one at only about five minutes. Um, but in that review, I did um, enjoy it a bit more than I did this time. But... As for Elvira, uh, she really leaned into her dislike for this film quite a bit, um, but in a lot of fun ways. You know, we had a lot more pop-ins in this one, it felt like, and just flatly staying, stating how boring it is, how much the movie's a waste of time, is like her entire shtick for this one was finding other things to do with her time rather than even paying attention to the movie. I think at one point she's paying taxes, doing laundry, answering fan mail, and so forth. But we do get um, a lot more going on as far as her popping in, a lot more comments about if we're even going to get to see Dracula or get more than a couple minutes of him. And she's right, you know, in and of itself, this film is very slow. Um, but that made her presentations and the pop-ins and the commercial breaks and so on, as she throws a lot of that humor in, bring some life into the presentation overall, which actually made it, you know, pretty fun. Um, so we get another one here, another little short video on this, um, about this presentation. But um, if interested in this film at all, I would recommend either doing the whole Hammer Dracula, you know, visit or revisit, see how everything kind of goes along the way and where this one fits in and how it kind of feels overall in the grand scheme of things, or just check out her presentation of it on Movie Macabre. I think it's on Shout TV or some other free service out there, maybe Peacock. Um, go ahead and use the uh, WhatsApp app on your phone and it should tell you where you could find a 2010 season of Elvira's Movie Macabre because her comedy will definitely help with it overall. But that's about all that I have for this, you know, other short one here. Now, the next one in the set, um, which is on the same disc, is The Werewolf of Washington, which I've never heard of. Um, but I have a feeling will be another one of the B movies, like most of these entries are in the set. So it should be a lot of fun to see what kind of fun she pokes at, uh, at that film. So needless to say, I can't wait to see what that one's going to be like and what she does with that one. So be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notification for when I put up that video, which will hopefully be in another week. Anyways, thanks for coming by. 
and I will see you in the next one.